Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Breath Talks. And it was is with absolute joy and pleasure that I introduce to you Tony Tony, who is um, a master of the breath and all things mystical. She has this incredible lineage. Um, even going back to her ancestors, which I'd love you to tell everyone a little of, a little bit about Tony, and freedom and liberation, which is what we need to be living in right now. But first of all, um, Tony is well acquainted with the breath and has even developed her own through her own experiences. So Tony, if you'd like to just talk a little bit about that. Sure. Hello, everyone. And it's so great uh, to be on your podcast. I'm so delighted to be with your group of, of followers. And it's just so exciting to me. So um, to begin with, I was extremely asleep spiritually about 30 years ago. Um, I was brought up in a Southern Baptist church and I was always told that God was out here, that God was not in here, but God was out here. And if I did X, Y, and Z, then I might be punished, even if I danced too close to a guy, which is like, okay. Yeah. And so anyway, so I quit church when I was about 16. And then when I was in my um, late 20s, I was awakened in the middle of of the night by this huge golden beautiful beautiful golden halo of light and I just watched as it kept undulating it just kept moving in and out and in and out and it was a huge ring but then it would turn into a figure eight and then come back into a ring again it was just absolutely phenomenal exactly mm -hmm. it was that wave of energy and um and so we began having kind of a telepathic communication, but, and I don't think I explained this to you earlier, but again, this was 33 years ago and it was two weeks before I, I actually almost died. Literally, they had given me 24 hours to live yeah. in the hospital if my white blood count didn't go back up. Yeah. So this whole awakening for me, this whole awakening began when again, when I was about 29, and um, I have a few years on the, on my 29, <laughs> but but I heard this this angelic presence and these words, and it said, "You are frightened. Have no fear, for what I have come to tell you is already known by you and all who have been given this precious breath of life, the breath that breathes your physical body. It's a miracle." Mm -hmm. You have simply taken it for granted because you fail to remember who and what you truly are. Mm -hmm. And if you fail to purify yourself and pierce through this thick, dense veil of illusion, mm -hmm. you will surely die. So prepare yourself for the end is coming soon. But you must remember, there is no end to this end. It is merely the beginning of that which never ends. For each end that you reach, is but a little death, which are merely stepping stones into the ultimate death of who and what you think you are. And as your feet fall along this very narrow and arduous path, you will be given many new names. Behold, the book of seven seals is about to be opened. Mm -hmm. But the greatest mystery is this, your physical body is the book of seven seals to be opened in the last days. Wonderful. Well, I had no idea what this information yes. because at the time I was selling millions of dollars worth of real estate and I was only focused on money. I was only focused on raising my kids uh, in an mm -hmm. environment that I was not given as, as a child. And I was just focused on materialism. Mm -hmm. That's where I was and spiritually disconnected from God because I didn't want to be involved with any kind of a God who was going to send me to a lake of fire yeah. if I did X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So two weeks later, you know, I had I have a brother who's a church of Christ minister and he says, Oh, you must've been dreaming and all, you know, da, da, da. you just need to forget about all of that. Go get baptized. You need to be rebaptized. I mean, we did this whole loop <laughs> and, um, so anyway, so I just kind of like pushed everything aside, but it was about 
two weeks later, I had a fever of 104, couldn't break it. Wow. My husband at the time, he's no longer with us, but my husband at the mm-hmm. time ended up taking me to an emergency room Mm -hmm. where they told me that my white blood count was dangerously low. Mm -hmm. So they put me in an isolation room where for seven days, my white blood count kept going down, no matter what they gave to me. They were giving me the highest level of of IV um, antibiotics that they could, Mm -hmm. and it kept going down. And so they just threw up their hands and they said, we have no idea what's going on, uh, but if your white blood count doesn't go up by morning, you're not gonna make it. So when I looked outside of my isolation window, I looked at my two children who were only you know, like four and six. Mm-hmm. And I said, God, if not for me, for those two children, please, please, I have to live. And so it was just the determination of a mama bear, you know. Yes, <laughs> just, absolutely. I, I have to live. Yeah, I'm a mama bear. Yeah. And um, so I, I kind of like started drifting off to sleep, and that mm-hmm. same golden halo of light um, appeared um, mm-hmm. above me, and we started having a, a real telepathic communication. And wow. um, I said, "I'm dying. And they have no cure for me." And the president said, how can they possibly have a cure when they don't understand your real problem? Wow. So I said, it's my real problem, (laughs) right? What's my real problem? And the president said, the belief that you're separate from God, from nature, and from everything and everyone around you. Mm -hmm. And if you will but focus upon your breath, the breath of God Mm -hmm. who breathed you into physical existence, you will live. Wow. So that's when I began to understand the power of our breath. So for the next couple of hours, that angelic presence stayed with me Mm -hmm. and began to breathe with me. And again, I was only 29 years of age. Mm -hmm. And when it breathed with me, every time I took an inhalation, the angelic presence moved out like this. And Mm -hmm. then when I took an exhalation, it came back in. Mm And as I started breathing this breath, which I now called the breath of translation, I began to feel when I breathed in, I began to feel every cell of my body breathe out, almost like my body was dematerializing Mm -hmm. and becoming spirit instead of physical. Mm -hmm. And then when I breathed out, it came back more into a Mm -hmm. physical form. So I kept breathing this undulating breath, this mm-hmm. breath of translation, woke up the next morning. They came in, took labs. The physician at the time said, Tony, Tony, you have no idea what just happened, but your white blood cell count is normal. Really? <laughs> you were reborn. <laughs> you were reborn. <laughs> it's, I was. I was truly born again at that point. I could yeah. talk to my brother what born again really meant. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, so after that, though, I was left with pain in my body, you know, my joints. Mm-hmm. And they said that my white blood cell count was that low. Um, but I had pain all over my body. Even though I was alive, I was in pain. Mm-hmm. So my real estate broker at the time, he used to try to get me to change my diet, but I was too busy. I was going from one appointment to the next. And I was eating at every fast fast food restaurant just to, you know, just to go from that appointment uh, to the next one. And um, so anyway, he says, just let me take you into a health food store to see if we can do something about this pain. So when I went in, Mm -hmm. I went to the book section and the book that just like went like this with me was Norman Walker's book on juicing and eating raw foods. Right. So after I read those two books, I mean, I, I stayed up all night long reading I bought yeah. a juicer, I bought a blender, I bought all this organic fruits and veggies. And again, I was going from this fast food diet into a uh, all raw food diet. I, I'm like, everybody was like, are you nuts? And um, my father always knew I was a little off, but <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I started doing that. And it was like 90 days later, the pain in my body was completely gone. Amazing. So I think that spirit was attempting Mm -hmm. to show me how to up, upgrade Upgrade. the physical body so that the physical body has a vibrancy 
And then when you use mm. the power of your breath mm. along with that vibrancy, because when you look at something called the fruit clock, you can mm. actually go to Amazon and look up a fruit clock. And a fruit clock is, it has a positive pole and a negative pole and you mm. plug it into a piece of raw fruit and it literally runs a clock. Wow. It's because we're electrical. Yeah. 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 We're electrical by nature, right? Yeah. We're electrical. Mm -hmm. And electricity can only happen if you have enzymes and it can only happen if you have minerals. Yes. So it's with those two. And, and then I began to understand uh, the power of that, but also the power of phytochemicals in order to upgrade my physiology. A lot of people mm -hmm. that, um, that are in the breath movement, you know, a lot of people think that the body doesn't really matter as far as diet and this, that, and the other, but I have to tell you something, yeah. it does matter. I agree it, with you. And Leonard used to teach this. And we, we have a whole section called Body Mastery, which is all beautiful. about fasting, eating a vegetarian diet, um, juicing. You know, it's so yes. incredibly important to look after our bodies. It is incredibly important. And even after I did that 90 day, just all raw juicing, mm -hmm. smoothies and eating salads and eating fruit, even after I did that, I switched to um, a vegetarian diet, mm -hmm. which you have rice and beans and this, that and the other. And, you know, you can drink almond milk, soy milk and all this. And I started having pain again. Because the vegetarian diet just isn't it. I have a, yeah. uh, a book called The Ecotarian Diet. Okay. Yeah, it's Fantastic. called the ecotarian. Yeah, and that diet is all about eating for the ecology of your body because we're made out of air, fire, yeah. earth, and water. Mm -hmm. And the types of food that we burn for fuel mm -hmm. into our body's environment is extremely important, just like the burning of fossil fuel into our planet's environment. Mm -hmm. it's huge and then I came up with a theory called the internal acid rain theory and um ah, uh, brilliant I love that yeah, I love uh, that. A physician, yeah yeah a physician who's a neurologist in LA mm -hmm. he's a really good friend of mine um I went to a medical conference with him once mm -hmm. and they were blaming every every you know, disease, every neurological disease on this bacterium called chlam uh, chlamydia bacterium, because they uh -huh. always found that it was present in the brain of anyone who had MS, Parkinson's, uh -huh. Alzheimer's, et cetera. So I looked at him on the flight back and I said, let me ask you a question. And he said, what? He said, what did, I said, what is the pH of the brain supposed to be? Because we all know, or most of us know that the pH of your blood mm -hmm. has to a at a constant 7.35 to 7.4 mm -hmm. if not we die that's just the way it yeah. is and so he said he said well it's supposed to be the same as the blood 7.35 7.4 and he said why and I said is there any way that we can test the pH of the brain of any of your neurological patients and I was just seeing them taking tissue out of the brain because <laughs> I didn't know yeah. and yeah. he said no problem he said the cerebral spinal fluid is in fact the brain's mm -hmm. water supply and should have a pH value of 7.35 to 7.4. So he said the next 20 something patients that I do a spinal tap on, mm -hmm. I'll take the pH. And when he did, he was blown away. And he basically said, I don't have the book in front of me right now, but he basically said, mm -hmm. After, after looking into Tony Tony's internal acid rain theory, mm -hmm. I was pleasantly surprised when I saw that she was right. Every one of the patients that I tested mm -hmm. their pH, they all had a cerebral spinal fluid of 5.5. Oh. The pH of internal oh, wow. acid rain, further yeah. research is substantiated to see if turning these devastating diseases around. From what I now see, I am optimistic, Dr. Lauren LaBelle, neurologist, mm, mm, mm. Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. So for anybody that doesn't understand the pH scale, the lower the pH, the more acidic the environment Correct. is. Exactly. Correct. And the higher, like the, higher the more basic. Exactly. Thank mm. you for saying that. So pH stands for potential of hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And so, as we all know, you know, hydrogen, I used to drive a hydrogen car in LA because they had hydrogen right. fuel stations. 
But here <laughs> in North Carolina, they don't have hydrogen yeah. fueling stations. So I had to let my car go when I left mm -hmm. there. Um, but hydrogen is everything. It's the most abundant element in mm -hmm. the entire universe. And when you look at hydrogen, mm -hmm. you're looking at the beginning of water. Gen mm -hmm. meaning Genesis, the beginning, and water, mm -hmm. and how oxygen and how mm -hmm. oxygen and water work together. Mm -hmm. So in a pH environment, even if you look at what happened to Lake Erie, and this is something that I wrote about in my book, when you happen, look at what happened to Lake Erie in the late 60s, mm. it was declared dead. All of these fish were all yeah. over the shore and it was declared dead because they kept dumping year after year after year, all of these phosphates from mm. a sewage plant mm. into the water. Yeah. Phosphates are extremely acid. Acids go from 5.5, well, they can be actually lower, mm. but for the human body and for water, 5.5 to mm -hmm. 7. Mm -hmm. And um, so that lake's pH had mm -hmm. to be 5.5. I don't know because I wasn't there and didn't mm -hmm. measurement, measure it. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that in an acid, an acid pushes mm -hmm. oxygen out mm -hmm. of the cell. It yeah. pushes oxygen out of water. And we're 75% water. I look at the fish that died that were on that sandy shore. I look at the fish that died like mm -hmm. our cells that swim through the watery terrain of our physical mm -hmm. body. And what happens is that when this happens, so algae started to overgrow. Mm -hmm. It was using all of the, all of the waters, um, environmental, uh, the algae started yeah. to overgrow. And what happened is that it depleted the oxygen levels yep. and the, and the acids became, you know, building up. And then all of a sudden, Lake Erie became like a lake of fire. All of a sudden it yeah, just yeah, started yeah. burning. And I look at that lake of fire inside of most of us is inflammation. Mm -hmm. So when our physical body becomes too acidic, and again, our blood needs to be at 7.35 to 7.4. Mm. I always test our first morning saliva pH. Mm -hmm. And um, when I do that, that saliva pH first morning before you drink water, brush your teeth, whatever, that saliva pH should be at mm -hmm. 7.3. If it's lower than that, mm -hmm. we know that our cells are floating in a more acidic environment. Mm -hmm. This is how I work with my clients. Yes. Uh, it's the first thing I do. Yeah. And um, so anyway, so I'm all about pH mm -hmm. because again, if we understand the power of our breath yeah. and we're acidic, a lot of people mm -hmm. in, in our breath work community, what happens is they get something called tetany. Mm -hmm. If they start breathing super deep, yeah. mouth yeah. breathing tetany, and those are all of the acids because mm -hmm. acids will go distal. They'll go to our hands and our feet. Yeah. So I always tell people, alkalize, alkalize, alkalize. And when you do, your body is going to be more and more prepared to move mm -hmm. all of those old false beliefs and yeah. perceptions out of your physiology. Mm -hmm. It will do it quicker because if your body mm -hmm. isn't prepared to move that energy, to have that electrical divine spark inside mm -hmm. of us, to move the energy. Yeah. I believe a lot of times we stay stuck. Yes. Yeah. So let's, let's unstuck ourselves. <laughs> let's <laughs> alkalize ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I remember a macrobiotic diets. This is like the principle underlying that is about alkalinizing what you're eating and consuming. Yeah. yeah, I always look at the body, you know, like mm. when people talk to me um, about pH, yeah. I always look at the body as an ecosystem mm -hmm. and uh, all ecosystems, you know, because again, when you look at neurological diseases, mm -hmm. um, when you look at acid rain and what acid mm. rain does to the planet, whenever acid rain comes down through the process called oxidation, mm -hmm. which is what happens when we eat food, when yeah. we eat food, our body, our stomach burns it through oxidation. Mm. So when acid rain comes down, if you think about a tree, mm -hmm. it starts to burn that waxy protective coating around the trees, you know, mm -hmm. the branches of the tree around the bark mm -hmm. and um, that waxy protective coating I see as the myelin sheath around yeah. the nerves of our body. Yeah. So when you see and, and look at our body is, is, is a living ecosystem. I yeah. mean, it truly is, it is. because spinal column 
And we yeah. have branches called the nerves. And our organs mm -hmm. literally hang from our nerves, kind yeah. of like fruit that hangs from a tree. Mm -hmm. And th the more acidic we become, mm -hmm. the more these bugs, like the chlamydia bacteria for the brain, the more these bugs, because they're nothing more than nature's reducer organisms mm -hmm. that show up on the scene to reduce what is dead and dying back into the dust of the earth. I see the, the tree, mm -hmm. when you look at a tree, it has a huge root system mm -hmm. with all these tiny hairs that goes out into the soil. And those roots are, are the, the tiny hairs are responsible mm -hmm. for bringing nutrients into that tree. Yeah. But if acid rain has hit the soil, it completely gets rid of all of those microorganisms in yeah. the first five inches of the soil. And what yeah. happens is that those microorganisms are what break down the nutrients for the tree. Mm -hmm. And so the tree begins to get plugged up. It begins to get sick. It loses its immunity. More and more bugs start attacking it. And I believe that that's the same thing that happened to me when I almost died. Mm -hmm. you know, because I definitely had a bug. They just couldn't figure out what it was mm -hmm. and they couldn't yeah. figure out the right kind of antibiotic. And that's what we do to plants, right? We yeah. spray it with pesticides. We do it to our cells with antibiotics. And so, but the key is to yeah. power up our mitochondria because yeah. the mitochondria within every cell of our body mm -hmm. is the key to our immortal life, if you yeah. will. Because if it's weak, like the engine in a car, mm -hmm. and it can't keep up with our daily processes of mm -hmm. taking nutrients in and extracting waste, if it's unable to do that, our cells begin to die. Yeah. And uh, I'm all about thriving. How about you? Yeah, yeah exactly. And you have like, um, you, you do sessions with clients and have this wonderful machine you use to look at a person and everybody, everything that's affecting them. Yes, um, I have something from Germany called the CyberScan. Mm -hmm. And the CyberScan is amazing because um, it's not a, about diagnosing. It's mm -hmm. about looking at the energy of the physical body. Mm -hmm. But what it does, it looks like, you know, it might look like you have something called periodontal disease, which I just did for a client in LA. And that periodontal disease is what created myocarditis. But you could mm -hmm. also look at that as, oh my gosh, you know, why did that bug show up on the scene, mm -hmm. right? In yeah. your mouth, because your saliva pH is supposed to be 7.3. Mm -hmm. If it isn't, you know, then those bugs show up and it creates pockets. It creates periodontal disease, cavities, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So the cyber scan, actually the other day, they said, why does my uncle have myocarditis? And I kept thinking, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, you know, because a lot of people, um, who received the COVID vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, some of these people are getting myocarditis and some yeah. aren't. I think it has to do with your mm -hmm. genetical makeup. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, when I looked at him, it was all about periodontal disease. Wow. And um, so I I'm able to help him now because, you know, because he kept getting uh, Staphylococcus viridans, which means, and, and that's what the cyber scan showed, mm -hmm. And it means that's the um, uh, the streptococcus that, that was the bacterium that was yeah. living in those pockets. And they gave him antibiotics, but it came back again because you mm -hmm. didn't take care of the problem. Yeah. And the problem is an acidic saliva PA, but then you have to go in and have someone who knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. like this amazing dentist that I always refer people to in LA, who mm -hmm. uses ozone to clean the teeth. She doesn't scrape, doesn't do all that. It's ozone mm -hmm. to clean the teeth, which rids the body of like streptococcus or whatever bacterium, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. you're dealing with. So anyway, so as you can tell, I'm all about pH. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I look at pH also, you know, you're going to laugh at this one is either our potential for heaven, mm -hmm. right? pH, potential for heaven, or our potential <laughs> for hell within the chemistry of our body. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because acids, acids create a burning like a fire, right? And yeah. then bacterium could be seen as our demons. <laughs> so it's like, I believe that we can live <laughs> in that state yeah. within our chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't think that there's anything outside of us. I think it's all in here. So it's like, let's begin to shift this level of consciousness and begin mm -hmm. to eat more and veggies in our diet. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm creating a new product right now called Alkalize Yourself, Yay. which is an amazing product. 
it's it's amazing because mm -hmm. I've had people to have a really acid uh, saliva pH of like 5.5 mm -hmm. and about later it was right at 7.35 because a lot right. of people believe that it's calcium that you have to take to buffer acids and it's like no 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 mm -hmm. and they believe that greens are alkalizing well somewhat but not the key mm -hmm. it's organic so organic so some, yeah Sorry. organic sodium sodium organic sodium is mm -hmm. in plants yeah. because oh, I call it organic basically because a plant mm -hmm. will pull sodium from the soil and it'll metabolize it and bring it up into the plant yeah. and that plant if there's enough sodium in the soil mm -hmm. you know too much can kill it too but if there's an adequate amount of sodium in the soil that plant becomes so immune to any type of environmental threat that there could be uh, yes. like fungus or yeast yeah. or whatever. It, it's, it's the key to yeah. our immunity as well. Even, even Harvard university has done a huge mm -hmm. study on phytochemicals mm -hmm. because the phytochemicals is what protects the plants from the yeah. environment. But phytochemicals, if we eat enough of them, mm -hmm. they also protect us. And I have a saying in, in my new book, which is called the seven day new moon transformational fast feast while you fast. Mm -hmm. So feasting for me is feasting on you know, every yes. color, every yeah. color. And I, I stated a color a day keeps plagues away. Great. And I wanted you to talk a bit about this book to everyone, because I think it's incredibly under important to understand this in relation to the moon cycle. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, I'll begin uh, telling you about the book when I was in Los Angeles, California, 1994, mm -hmm. <clears throat> when the Northridge earthquake hit. Um, it was a couple of days, maybe even a week after it hit. Mm -hmm. An earthquake does something to your nervous system that unless you've been in one, you don't know. I mean, it's, you know, and this one was big. I wow. mean, it was 6.8. Mm -hmm. It broke windows and everything was crashing in and mm -hmm. uh but then uh, about two weeks later i was in uh, a restaurant called follow your heart in northridge and mm -hmm. i was in this restaurant eating lunch and all of a sudden boom an earthquake hit again and it was right at 6.5 i ended up under the table because the ceilings were coming down it was mm -hmm. crazy and that night i went to bed and fell asleep and I was reluctant to even fall asleep because it's like, oh, my gosh, or am I going to wake up in the middle of another earthquake? Because they were hitting like boom, 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 boom. It's like mm -hmm. all of these aftershocks were really pretty mm -hmm. strong. And so I was awakened in the middle of the night again by this beautiful golden halo of light. Mm -hmm. And I heard its message. I, I can't say if it was a him or a her because there was no differentiation between a she voice and a he voice. Mm -hmm. And um, he, she said, your mission is to help people get their physical bodies ready. There's a change coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? And the president said it again. Your mission is to help people get their physical bodies ready. There's a change mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. And when the physical body is ready, it's in the breath yeah completely takes an inhalation mm -hmm. and again you know mm -hmm. moved out 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 mm -hmm. until it dematerialized and then took an exhalation and came back into a, a more material form and mm -hmm. said it's in the breath and poof the angelic presence was gone yes. so a couple of days later i was meditating and i said please show me what is the greatest thing we can do to get our physical bodies ready for this change that you're talking about? And that's when I, you know, finally have created this particular book called the seven day new moon transformational fast. And what I heard was you must understand that your immune system is completely connected to the moon cycles. Mm. And then I heard, Immune means I'm moon. For 21 days, your immune system waxes, it goes up, and for seven days, it wanes. And it's during that seven day new moon waning phase mm -hmm. that the viscosity of the blood thins, which I see it now as our inner Red Sea, 
the viscosity of our blood oh, thin, wow. which allows for the highest thoughts of who and what you truly are to move over into the promised land of your heart. Wow. And to increase, is, oh, to oh. increase. Oh, hold on. What do you have? Ah, it's your book. Oh, oh sorry. I'm, I'm trying okay. to get the flash. Yeah, yeah. And it's, then basically, it's, it's, it said to increase the viscosity, you must fast. The, the key is to fast on phytochemicals. Yeah. Beautiful. You must fast on phytochemicals for these seven days. So I've created a whole way of fasting with either juices or smoothies or whatever yeah. with all of these different seven colors, because again, the color of day keeps plagues away. Yeah. So we're going to power up our mitochondria. We're going to power up our immunity yes. for using the power of plant foods that were created through what? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. <laughs> yeah. of the sun, right? Yeah. So it's the sun and the moon and how they dance together in the heavens that mm -hmm. are going to help all to prepare our physical bodies for the mm -hmm. shift of the ages. Yeah. And I do believe that we're shifting more from mm -hmm. physical consciousness into spirit consciousness spirit. because I wrote something once called Moses and it was a major download. Mm -hmm. But but one little line in there that was basically said, you must learn to um you must learn that you are neither male nor female you mm -hmm. are pure spirit spirit uh, who is free free to be the ultimate in anything that, that you choose to do yeah. so it went on and on and on about breathing whenever i breathe now and i and i do an i am prayer with it as outlined in this mm -hmm. new book i am pure mm -hmm. spirit and every time I breathe, I am breathing this physical consciousness out of my my own psyche. And I'm mm. breathing in spirit consciousness because in spirit, there is no sickness, there is no disease, and there is no yes. death. And this is what Mary Baker Eddy talked about in Christian science back in the 1800s, that it wow. is a lie. It's an error to think we are matter. So I yes. love I love your breath, the inhalation. I am spirit. Yes, and it's through the nostrils, nostrils. because remember, in in the Old Testament, it said, and God breathed mm -hmm. into. I'm going to use the word man because that's what the scripture yeah. says. But God breathed into man in his nostrils, nostrils. the breath yeah. of life, life, and man became a living soul. Yes. So it's like, you know, to do the rebirthing breath, mm. which is beautiful because, you know, you're in there releasing mm. all of these old emotional patterns. Yeah. But when you are breathing in the fact that you are pure spirit, it's in the nostrils. Yeah. Because yeah. that's where God breathes the breath of life into us. And uh, it's, it's so exciting to me because I wake up every morning and I'm mm -hmm. so excited and I lay in bed. And I just start breathing the fact that I am that I am yeah. pure spirit. I am more than flesh and blood. I am yes. more than flesh and blood. I am pure spirit. And I believe that once we have programmed mm. our consciousness to really viscerally know this, mm. Mm. and I believe that this seven-day transformational fast yeah. is one of the keys because it's during that new moon phase that we take on the new us. Yeah wonderful okay now tony tony like myself you are a traveler of mysticism and i'd just like you to talk a little bit about your fantastic world traveling experiences um particularly in greece Travels took me a lot of different places from the Parasalsis Clinic to in Switzerland, uh, but mostly between the island of Patmos and the island of Kos. And the island mm -hmm. of Kos in Greece is where the tree of Hippocrates stands and also where the ruins, um, the uh, hospital ruins are. And I actually mm -hmm. studied botanist over there and mm -hmm. hardly anyone knows this. But in the museum in Kos, Hippocrates wrote a book about this thick. I mean, it's thick. Yes. And oh my gosh, I was just like this botanist. It was like talking to me about 
using food as medicine. And I said, that's what I did to move pain out of my physical body, mm -hmm. you know, along with understanding that I'm spirit and that I'm not just a, a, a <laughs> bones and, and skin. Yeah. And so we were talking about, you know, our immune system and all of that other kind of stuff. And he said, if you truly understand this one, because you have to understand I'm more about in, you know, like I was telling all of you guys at Sandra's amazing birthday party, it doesn't matter to me if a person is Democrat or Republican. Uh, my maiden name was Hancock, um, and I'm in the lineage of John L. Hancock, who wrote the Declaration of Independence. So I took mm -hmm. the Declaration of Independence when I was a teenager, yeah. and I looked at it, and it was all about nature. And so when you really yeah. delve into the Declaration, you'll see that, mm -hmm. that you know these fathers who signed the Declaration of Independence they were more about how when we learn to work with nature instead of against it, mm. that we thrive. Yeah. And um, so, so when I looked at that, I've always been, you know, when I got sick, it mm. taught me about natural immunity. So this botanist, this was, this was before COVID hit, but yeah. this botanist told me, he said, Tony, if you understand what Hippocrates was trying to teach us here about, mm being inoculated he said berries are nature's inoculators yeah and if you will eat enough of them during mm -hmm. their growing season those phytochemicals will go into your body's storehouse wow. and in your body's storehouse they will create a shield around you where no bug can touch you and it's true with plants wow. when you get yes. plants that are healthy and you look at different phytochemicals, that's what they're there for. They and during the world. Huh? And dur during the correct season. So eating correct. seasonally is incredibly important. Incredibly important because that's mm -hmm. when the life force of that mm -hmm. plant mm -hmm. is at its highest. Yeah. Because for me, my soul is the life force of my body. Mm -hmm. And I came into this life to free my soul to free it from, if if you will, you know, I don't even like to use the word imprisonment, but yeah. the confinement of just mm -hmm. thinking physical. Yeah. And so um, all I do during, during the growing season is mm -hmm. I make all kinds of smoothies and even eat them mm -hmm. all kinds of berries. And um, I, during those two years did not get COVID. I was, I, I chose not to be inoculated um, mm -hmm. through the COVID vaccine because mm -hmm. I really, really believe um, in my own body's mm -hmm. uh, power yep. to shield me against anything and everything because of my journey. If yeah. I hadn't had this particular journey that I've had, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you could have convinced me, yeah. but I've had an amazing journey and I'm telling you something, I you know, and just so excited because there's so many mm -hmm. uh, contagious fear driven thoughts mm -hmm. that are circling our globe. And there are contagious fear driven bugs, you know, that are in yes. the air. We breathe. <laughs> so I believe that it's what we buy into. Yes. I choose not to buy into fear. Mm. I choose to use my body's life force to shield me because in mm -hmm. the scriptures, because mm -hmm. I, I was brought up with the Bible that mm -hmm. it says in those days, in those end time days, put on the full armor of God yeah. that nothing can come nigh you. Fabulous. That's what Fabulous. I want to live. And then That's Leonard, what I want to live. Leonard if we to... believe in disease and if we believe in bugs, yeah. you know, that, that can harm us, mm. bugs can only harm us if there's food. It, think about mosquitoes mm -hmm. on a lake, right? Mm -hmm mosquitoes only show up if the lake is stagnant if your lymphatic system is stagnant if your blood is stagnant if you're not circulating properly yeah yeah you know it's like boom yeah you're, you're gonna you're gonna be sucked with it so so for me it's like that would be the time to be inoculated with you know whatever but for me yeah. it's like oh well, yeah uh, i believe in nature and i mm -hmm. believe in natural mm -hmm. immunity so i left there Mm -hmm. And I, I've actually been living off and on on the island of Patmos, you know, because yes. remember, first angelic visit said mm -hmm. your body is the book of seven seals to be opened in the last days. Yeah. So when I went to Patmos, this mystical 
happening that kept happening with me. I met up with a monk right outside of the cave of the apocalypse. And I always thought that the word apocalypse meant the final war between good no. and evil. <laughs> it means to lift the veil. Yes. When we lift the veil between mm -hmm. the physical and the spirit, between mm -hmm. us and the divine, mm -hmm. then the mystic can be born. Yes. Then, then we know who and what we really are. And the word sin, as I was taught mm -hmm. in, um, in church, uh, that, oh, you're a bad person if you do X, Y, and Z. The word sin means to forget in Greek. Mm. So when we forget who yeah. and what we really are, yes. we miss the mark. Yeah. And so even it's not like you yeah. bad person. No, no, no. We just miss the mark. Oh, and then repentance means to turn away from, yeah. you know, doing it this way. And I'm going to follow this path because I want the highest and best for my body, for my mind and for my soul. So know yeah. thyself, know thyself, know thyself, thyself. <laughs> yeah, no, know thyself, <laughs> yeah, know thyself. <laughs> so I spent those first six months um, in the cave of the apocalypse because I was told wow. mystically that I would be given a master key that mm -hmm. would help people to open up their physical body's book mm -hmm. of seven seals. Yeah. And if you look at the book of Revelation, it also talks about the seven churches mm -hmm. um, of, you know, Revelation. Yeah. And what I began to understand is that our seven seals are our seven bodies, energy centers of light, whose lights mm -hmm. have been dimmed until the time of the end. And so when I looked at that, it's like, these are the seven seals. These are the, what a lot of people call chakras. This is the whole mm -hmm. understanding of the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And then when I started looking at the seven churches, mm -hmm. you know, because seven churches are in Turkey, but it used to be uh, uh, Greece. Greece. And so I traveled through those seven churches mm -hmm. and I was shown, you know, because it's like the angel of the first church, right? Yeah. The angel of the first church says to the church, your only problem is that you have left your first love. Yeah. So apologies. Um, so that's your only problem mm. is that you've left your first love. love. And so our first love, of course, is the Christ consciousness is God, is the divine within all of us. And so what I began to understand is that angels are messengers, right? That's what angels are. You know, yeah. if you look it up, angels are messengers. Yeah. Well, when you look at hormones, mm -hmm. hormones are messengers. Yes. When you look at the seven churches, I now understand them to be the seven, represent the seven endocrine glands. Ah, okay. So... It's, it's like between the endocrine glands and these seven seals, when you look at a caterpillar, mm. a caterpillar has an exciter hormone in the brain mm -hmm. right before it goes into its, oh, its cocoon. Okay. Yeah. And that exciter hormone takes place in the hypothalamus, which yeah. sends other hormones to other endocrine glands mm -hmm. within that caterpillar. So it can be free to become the butterfly that it was created to be. Wow. And I believe that that's what we're doing. I have uh, been writing a novel over there called The Key. And this is the uh, master key that I was given. And so anyway, so this book that I just wrote, um, mm -hmm. you know, on, on the fast mm -hmm. is to prepare our physical bodies mm -hmm. really and truly for the shift of the ages mm -hmm. and for the deep hearted understanding that we are much more than we yeah. believe that we are. Yes, absolutely. Do you talk about the seven seals in any of your other books? Um, if you look at New Earth Prophecies, I mm -hmm. really talk about the endocrine glands okay. in, yep. in that book. Great. Um, this book is more focused on feasting while you fast, because again, when you look yep. at the seven seals, and if you see them as the seven chakras, they all have different colors. Yeah. Like the first seal, mm -hmm. the first energy center is red. That's completely connected to our adrenals. Mm -hmm. And so it's, we get into this yeah. fight and flight kind of mm -hmm. a situation and mm -hmm. go into adrenal fatigue, basically because we're still walking around in the wilderness of life, like the Israelites, yeah. because we've lost our connection. Mm-hmm. 
But when we eat red foods, red foods began to open up our circulatory system, like right. red beet powder. Amazing. I yeah. put a lot of my clients on red beet powder mm -hmm. to help if I see that their circulatory system is really sluggish. Yeah. And so it's all of these different phytochemicals mm -hmm. and we could go all the way up, you know, again, mm -hmm. you know, the next color is orange. Mm -hmm. And that has to do with the gonads and also, you yeah. know, with the females, you know, with the testes mm -hmm. and uh, with the ovaries for women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's like eating a lot of orange phytochemicals. Yeah. And so we just keep going up and up and up. And I believe that this third center Mm -hmm. which is the color green, which has to do with green. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, it has to do with the color yellow and that has to do with potassium and the color yellow mm -hmm. where there's all kinds of uh, foods, but mm -hmm. this is where I believe when they talk about death begins in the colon, that third mm -hmm. shock is all about this whole abdominal area where yeah. the liver and the mm -hmm. gallbladder and the pancreas and the spleen mm -hmm. and the intestinal tract. Yeah. And I believe that that's where our ego mind mm -hmm. comes from, but also our spirit mind. So yeah. you have Pharaoh, which can be seen, which is what I've written about in this new book. So you have Pharaoh, which is mm -hmm. our ruling consciousness that has to do with the ego. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh, like me, way back when, was all about materialism. Yeah. Gold, all of this other kind of stuff was all about money, my job, my this, my that. Mm -hmm. It's all about making money and then and then ignoring the fact that we are pure spirit, yeah. which is the Moses mind. So Moses, every time mm -hmm. he declared, you know, let my people go, mm -hmm. try doing that with your ego. It's yeah. like... <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't want to let us go. It keeps us in this this gerbil loop, right? It doesn't <laughs> yeah. let us go. Loop. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. is this yeah. thing ever going to die off? It's like, eventually, <laughs> yeah. yes. But um, but anyway, and then we go up into the heart, which is green, mm -hmm. our green, which is our heart center. Mm. Once we move out of that that Egyptian consciousness of mm -hmm. where the ego lives mm -hmm. and we look more toward the Moses mind or the mind of Christ and we go inside of ourselves and then we move up through the power of our breath remember it's in the breath mm -hmm. but also when you give the body the colors mm -hmm. that it needs these phytochemicals to yeah. protect us to shield yeah. us and then when we go up into the heart yeah. that heart chakra is so powerful yeah. and then and then i see it as the uh where the tree of life lives you know because yeah. when you look at the four rivers that mm -hmm. flow into the garden of eden we have four the four ventricle it, it's the same yes. thing for the heart yeah. yeah so when i looked at that i was like oh my gosh so i got so excited and then again green and um and so when you do this fast with mm -hmm. me during the new moon cycle every month. And mm -hmm. again, you don't have mm -hmm. to do water or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like right now I'm ending my new moon fast for this past month. Um, and today I'm doing a lot of greens where I yep. put like in a blender, I'll put like water and mm -hmm. a bunch of spinach or mixed greens or yep. whatever. I blend that up and yep. then it turns into a greenish looking thing. And then mm -hmm. I put my alkaline powder in there, which has all the colors. Yeah. Uh, even if you don't have the alkaline powder, it doesn't matter, but mm -hmm. you do your grains and then you do every color, every fruit, every berry, uh, whatever yeah. you want yeah. into yeah. that, along with chia seeds. I grind up chia seeds, put it in there. And that's all I've been consuming over the last, uh, today is the, the last day. Yeah. Um, and then you go to the throat chakra, mm -hmm. which is Thyatira. Yeah. In the, the church of Thyatira. Mm -hmm. um, and when you look at that, yeah. It's like the words that we speak to each other, to ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. what words are you speaking? Um, are they building another person up or are they tearing them down? So for me, mm. I want to use my words because I can put a spell on mm -hmm. a lot of people if I start mm -hmm. speaking words that don't support who and what they are. Mm -hmm. Even if we've had friends in our world that have disappointed us or, you know, we think that they should have done X, Y, Z. You don't know what they should have done. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they should have done. They have their own path. Mm 
and they have their own path and their own belief systems. So for me, Mm -hmm. it's like only use words that are going to build and support that other person's path. Yeah. And so, and then we get into, you know, the pineal gland Mm -hmm. and a lot of different things that can decalcify yeah. the pineal gland because most of right. our pineal gland is closed. Yeah. And that has to do with the sixth seal and the sixth church. Gosh. And then we get up into the seventh, which is all about reaching mm. into our Christ conscious mind yeah. and living there. That's where I want to live. And that's yeah. where I live most of the time. And sometimes mm-hmm. I'm still tripping myself up. And <laughs> but we have to immediately forgive ourselves and go, whoops, yeah. that was a trip. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and then we laugh at ourselves and, and then we go okay and um because a lot of these programs are in our emotional field they're in our yeah. emotional body and so it just takes time you know through the rebirthing breath and through understanding that we mm-hmm. are pure spirit and that we have through the cyber scan the cyber scan shows me and it showed mm-hmm. me toes before we come into this earth we're sitting up there you mm-hmm. know at one minute with the divine mm-hmm. and we go oh okay um soul family so who mm-hmm. are you going to choose parents what are you going to you know yeah. so we choose our parents according yep. to quantum physics we choose mm-hmm. our parents mm-hmm. to learn our next phase of evolution as a soul mm-hmm. yeah and so we choose our parents and if we're taught like i was um you know a certain belief system mm. um and we don't believe anything that we're being taught or most everything that we're not being or being taught. Mm. Um, And if, if we hang there and, and we haven't Mm -hmm. resolved it in the mental body, then Mm. it comes down into the emotional body. And then if we don't clear it there, it comes down into the physical body and becomes a physical disease. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what the cyber scan shows me whenever Mm -hmm. I see a person, where did this, this thought originate from? Yeah. And it's, it's amazing because yeah, it, it shows me so clearly. And then, and only then, you know, do I put a person on a program because mm-hmm. I have the company that I work with professionally. Mm-hmm. That's amazing uh, to begin to eliminate parasites, which are parasitic thought forms. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, um, yes. And also, yeah. So anyway, so mm. yeah, that's all I have to say about that. That's brilliant. <laughs> and so Tony Tony's website is www.tonitonei.com and you can get all the information on her programs and her books from there and I'll also put a link in the introduction to this video on YouTube so um, wow this has been an incredible uh, information session and I hope everybody really has listened to Tony talking about how we need to really look after our bodies it's an ecosystem and I'll be getting that book for sure with my background in ecology and marine <laughs> biology. I totally get you. <laughs> yeah. it's like the outer is a mirror of the inner and the inner is a, a mirror of the outer. And once we get that and we understand yeah. that we are in the ecosystem, it just disease and all that kind of stuff. It just fell away from me. It's like yeah. I began to understand that these bacteriums and everything else, they're just reducer organisms in nature that come yeah. on the scene what's dead and dying back into the dust of the earth. It's like, come on, let's let's do this. And what you said about <laughs> berries, fantastic. Isn't that the protector? Neat? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, wonderful. This, this was his yeah. number one thing. He says during yeah. the flu season, just make sure that you've eaten tons of berries brilliant okay well thank you very much tony i really appreciate you giving time to us and um have a look at tony's website thank you so much for having me this has been a lot of fun great